Hello friends, happy Women's History Month. I'm so excited to be back with you all this March, sharing these stories by and about black women with y'all. Um, if you're new here, my name is Larissa McNeil. I am the African American Resource Center Coordinator for the Tulsa City County Library. Um, last March, I decided to, so one of my favorite things to do in the world is read. Ask anybody, I'm reading almost literally all the time. Um, so last March, when I was thinking about something in addition that I could do to celebrate Women's History Month and kind of highlight these stories that I'm always reading, I thought, hey, let me sit down and just chat about it with you all. And I'm very grateful that my job lets me do that. Um, so what I do each uh, March, every Thursday, I'll have a new video up at noon where I highlight a different book by a different black woman author um, <clears throat> across the genres. It's not just one particular genre. I'm going as many places as I can get to in these four or five weeks that I've got. Um, so hopefully I get to see you every week. Okay, that's my spiel. Let's dive in with our first book. So, this past week, I read a book called The Sun is Also a Star. Look at that cover, right? Don't they look great? Um, so, it's a YA, well, ooh, YA romance novel. What? So, I don't do a lot of YA, and I don't do a whole lot of romance, just because, I mean, I read a lot of romance, but I don't do a lot of YA in this book chat. For no particular reason. So I picked that up. I was like, young black girls need to hear their stories too. So Nicola Yoon is the author of this incredible um, book that's also now a major motion picture. Um, and I really, really, really liked it, y'all. To be fair, there's not very many books that I've done in this book chat that I didn't like, but I really did like this one. Um, so... Like I said, it is a romance story, but not um, in the way, that kind of formulaic way that you think of when you think of romance novels. Um, it, it really digs deep and in, into to feelings, into to the universe, which you'll understand in a second. Um, and it, it makes you think in a way um, that you would not expect when you picked up this book by Nicola Yoon about teenagers. So um, at the very top of this story, we have Natasha and Daniel in New York City. They are both 17 years old. Daniel is a first generation Korean American, which means that his parents immigrated to the United States before he was born and he was born in America. So he is considered an American citizen. Um, they own a black hair care store in New York uh, called I really want to say it's called like black hair, black hair care store or something like where the name of it is what it is. Um, so that's Daniel. Then we also have Natasha. Natasha is a Jamaican immigrant. She moved to America when she was eight with her mom. Her dad had been here for a couple of years, um, and so she's been here for a few years. When the story opens up, Natasha is in danger of being deported. So it grabs you. Right, you're like, oh dang. Um, they have to be on a flight at 10 o'clock that night. So Natasha's goal for that day um, is to spend it trying to appeal to immigration lawyers, um, to whatever person who works in an immigration place, um, to give them more time to to get the necessary paperwork that they need to stay in the United States. While she's doing that, Daniel uh, is on his way. He's kind of just, he really is just hanging out in New York City because he's got an interview later on that day with a Yale alumni uh, because he's going to try to get into Yale pre-med. So he's got to meet with this guy. Um, I don't know why. I think it's for an interview. I think, I don't know Ivy Leaks. Um, so possibly he needs that interview process or that, that connection to... Um, to go on his application. Natasha and Daniel meet each other by chance and they spend the day together. They go around New York City getting to know each other and the way they get to know each other is through a series of questions based on a scientific experiment in which a scientist wants to prove that love can be a scientific process. Now the reason that's important is because underneath that layer of just here are these two teenagers who like each other we have 
who they are as people separately. So Natasha is very pragmatic. She is one of those people who believes in things that can be proven. She wants to be a data scientist. I'm not sure what that is, but that's what she wants to be. Um, and she thinks that there should be a plan for every day. For every day, like you shouldn't just wake up and not know what you're gonna do. She thinks that things need to be planned out. Daniel is not the same. Daniel is a poet. Um, he doesn't want to be a practical doctor like his father thinks he should be. Um, and he's the sort of kid who thinks that sunsets are beautiful, and he writes poetry about that. And he he's a romantic, right? So you've got this this man who's a romantic and this or this girl, young young man who's romantic and this this young woman who is a pragmatic person, um, and they meet and he's instantly smitten and he's like, like I can make you fall in love with me and she's like that's ridiculous because love doesn't even exist because um, it cannot be proven right and he's like yes it can be and so that's how this this uh series of questions start and there are levels of vulnerability to them um as simple as what's your favorite color to something as deep as like what's your greatest fear your greatest regret or something along those lines so we have this happening um and it's lovely um, because she writes these characters in a way where you can see this obvious chemistry even as one of them kind of pushes back on the idea and I'll, even outside of um, what I really like about this book is even outside of the the romance there there's there's life in it it is it's meaty because what she does is she makes you she makes you think um, these two teenagers have two wildly different ideologies and when we think about that most people fall somewhere along that spectrum right that pragmatic versus romantic you got um, some people who are like super pragmatic some people who are super romantic people kind of fall along the lines right though um, but as I'm reading this book and I'm, I'm thinking about the, where these characters align for the most part they are very on the opposite um, it kind of reminds you or makes you think about the fact that like two things can be true at one time. For example, one of the, the arguments that the two or disagreements that the two of them have is about work. And um, so data science is, is like poetry is ridiculous. You will not make money doing that. You need to find a job that's going to make you money because you're going to be poor if you do not. And he is like, well, data science is boring and you don't even like it. Why would you spend your life doing something that you do not like? Um, and the reality is, it doesn't have to be either or, right? It just doesn't. Um, not all the time. You can be passionate about a practical job. Or you can take a practical uh, approach to uh, something that you're passionate about. Because I think about where I am as a young woman now. And it's such solid advice. Because in this moment right now, I am in a job that I am passionate about that I really really enjoy but it's at a library and that's practical <laughs> right so like the you can navigate life in a way where you can you can mix the two you can mix passion you can mix um, pragmatism without having to kind of compromise what it is you enjoy what you want to do or without having to be poor <laughs> um, so I love that Nicola you did like gave life into something um like that on a deeper level this book is about the differences in the uh, in the immigrant immigrant experience um and even how the culture of immigrants play a part so korea and jamaica are two very different places right their ideologies are, are different because their culture is different um and so Natasha's dad came to America chasing the American dream. For him, the American dream looked like stage success. So he wanted to be a stage actor. Um, and when that didn't pan out, he kind of fell into himself. And his wife and his children had to pick up the slack. So you see um, in interactions that Natasha has with her family and just kind of thinking back this idea that like okay if I dream like him this is where I'll be I won't be successful if I if I live in my dreams on the other side you have Daniel's parents who come from Korea they come from where they were they were poor um, 
And so they also came, especially uh, Daniel's dad. He also came chasing the American dream. But for him, the American dream looked like stability. It looks like having money to send my children to college. Um, and so when he came, he found a business. Um, and other Koreans in the area kind of helped him get started. They said, oh, black hair, business is booming. Black hair business is still booming. Um, <laughs> they said, like, this this is what's going to, to give you that stability. So he held on to that. And so for him... He never wants his children to experience what he experienced um, when he was back home. Um, and so he pushes that practicality. And so you see um, with Daniel, rebellion against that, right? Because all he sees is um, a life of no joy or, you know, Something along those lines. If I do what my dad wants me to do, if I go pre-med, if I become a doctor, I won't like it. So I'm going to be miserable. And what is the fun? Like, what? why would I do that to myself? And so it's really fascinating to see these uh, two 17-year-olds who are in this pivotal point in their lives. They're getting ready to go to college. They're stepping into the world. They're, they're making these decisions that we're told we have to make when we're quite literally still children. Um, and they're, they're trying to navigate this in a way that for them feels real and adult and, um, and like, yeah, that feels real and adult. Um, so I really like that, that piece of it too. And so there's also some stuff in there about fate and the universe. And I can't explain it fully because if I do, I'll give away the story. Um, but one of the other things that Nicola Yu does is she focuses on this idea of how fate and connection may or may not play a part in what we do and who we are. Um, it's kind of like this idea of if you are running late for work and you leave your house 10 minutes late and on your way you get into a car accident. If you had left 10 minutes earlier, would you not have gotten into a car accident? Right? We don't know. But like sometimes you think. Yeah, I should have. If I had left on time, this wouldn't have happened. Maybe or maybe not. And that's kind of the things that they are grappling with at 17 in this book. Kind of this idea that everything that I do, or even sometimes things that other people do, influence me, influence the way I behave. Because we see it, right? in their parents' actions and how they respond to those actions. The people they think they have to become as a direct result of the people that their parents are, are portraying themselves to be. Um, and then, not even that, just like the connections that are true for us. We are connected to people, regardless of if we want to be or not. <laughs> um, we are connected to other people. And it is true um, that the way that we move in the world is often a result of the way other people move in the world. And so Nicola Jung does a an interesting job um, of that. And the reason I say interesting is because the writing is incredible, but the chapters are a little bit choppy because they jump between the main characters, some side characters, and some of the history behind, like the history behind um, the advancement of Koreans in black hair care like why i guess especially in new york a lot of black hair care stores are owned by korean americans right so she kind of talks about the history of how that came to be um the history like the science behind certain things and it's like i said it can it can get jarring if you're not used to that type of approach to a book and if you're not someone who likes all of those different points of view I say still try it because I because at the end of this what you get is a beautiful tale about the way that we are all connected about the way um, that yeah the way that we're connected to to each other to our to our world if you don't want to say universe but to our world to the place in which we live and thrive and maybe not sometimes not thrive um, so what we get is romance. <laughs> We get um, some something about the immigrant experience. We get um, 
something about connection. Um, we get a little bit of something about fate too, um, and what a fate, whatever fate means to you, because it means something different to the two characters in this book too. Um, and so I really, really enjoyed it, y'all. And there's a movie, which I haven't watched. I will check out. Um, so thank you all for listening to me. I know this one was a little bit long, but I had to do my intro. Um, next week will not be as long. I will be reading a book called Token. I only vaguely know what it's about, um, but the cover is beautiful. So that's literally why I picked it up. So we'll see. Until next week, thank you for joining me at Black Girl Magic Book Chat.